DelicateBeats.com. Hey, welcome back guys. JT here for DelicateBeats.com. We're at it again with samples this week and last time I showed you how to loop a drum break. This time I'm going to show you how to sample a melodic loop. So stay tuned. So now let's try our hand at looping a melodic part in the samples here. So I'm just going to rename this to drum loop. I'm going to mute it and we are going to keep listening to the samples. I really like this soulful part here. So what I'm going to do is again just select this like this just to make sure that we have everything. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to create a new track. And I'm going to drag this right here. And I'm just going to clean up my session by deleting this. So now we're going to do the same thing I'm going to find the start point. And it starts here, but I just know by experience that this is actually the end of the fourth bar or yeah. So I'm just going to align it like this just so that I can loop a portion in my DAW. But actually this is the first beat. So we could already go ahead and cut this like so. And keep this portion here, just move it at the very end so that when we are able to loop this part, we can just throw this guy at the end. I'm going to show you how to do that later on. So right click, move to playhead. And obviously this is very much slower than the drum loop, so we're going to have to take a decision at some point to see if we either make this guy faster or the other one slower to have them lock in and play together. And we could try the BBM counter again just for fun. So we're going to enter, keep this in mind, 92.8, and we're going to move this to 72.2. I'm going to try to make it a four bar loop. So see how this here is pretty much the same, but with like strings and a couple of things. So we could already try to see if these two bars at the beginning loop and you can see that you know the kick does not match with the grid so there are many ways to approach this problem I could just move you know the BPM and have it loop perfectly but just for those two first bars And I could possibly just work with that first two bars and make a beat out of that. But we want to try to get it, get a bit more of the sample. So let's try to. All right, so we have a problem here. The sample is not exactly 72.2. What we could do now is go back to the end of the sample and make this kick a line right here. That takes us to a value of 
All right, so this four bar guy here loops perfectly now. I could also, you know, duplicate this and use this fill for the first four bars and have the second fill, you know, going into the chorus, for example. Let's listen to that just for fun. So you see there's a problem here and the problem is that it's not exactly you know aligning with the grid the snare is a bit late it's actually like a flam so oops when working with this it's also good to have a second track just to move stuff around So what we want to do is maybe move this like so, cut this, move our sample back on top and have the kick here from the other sample be exactly on the grid like so. Let's try to loop this portion now. <laughs> So the transition from the end of this little sample here into this one is good, but I don't really like the flams. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to be using this one here and move faster with the rest of the beat. So I've moved all of my samples to the beginning of my session and I've looped a four bar portion here. And what I I'm going to do next is use flex time in Logic to make this sample time stretch to any tempo change in my session. So double click on the sample and here it's already activated. You can just click on this little icon here and what it's going to do is find all of the main transients. And already if we play the sample and let's say for example we're going to change the tempo to 90 BPMs It's basically slicing all of these little guys and move them accordingly to the tempo change, which is fantastic. You can play around with different flex time settings. I like the automatic one because, well, it sounds pretty good. I mean, I've already changed the sample uh, by tw uh, 18 BPMs, with, which is kind of drastic, and it still sounds good. For f so, And because it's not a flex time, you know, tutorial, I'm not going to go in too deep with this, but just know that flex time when you're not sure what tempo you want to use is a great tool. Now, remember that this sample here was 92.8 BPMs. So we're just going to go back to this tempo so that it aligns perfectly on the grid and we're going to do the same thing here by activating flex time on our drum loop now just for the sake of the example let's go to i don't know 140 just see how well flex time works on our drum loop pretty good pretty good i mean at least it loops and it you know it changes tempo so mission accomplished there and just for fun let's try our drum loop with the main sample oh, sorry about that <laughs> let's let's try i don't know 80 88 bpms and i'm gonna already start to mix my beat by playing with the balance the volumes and maybe maybe even the panning <laughs> So there's a lot of different 
points here where the um, the hits in the drum track from the sample and the drum loop do not align. So in this first step, I'm going to try to align each of the snare hits from the sample on the grid. And as you can see, the drummer had a very laid back feel. So most of the snares are, are late here. So we have a snare here. So when you see a transient line like this, you want to double click on it and when the it's very difficult to see but when you have this little blue arrow like this you ha you can now drag it and move it and have it stick to the grid so now i have all of the different transients aligned and i can actually play the drum loop with the the, the sampled loop together without you know having it too chaotic sounding <laughs> But as you can tell, the um, the drum loop is very harsh, and the shaker has so mit so so much high frequencies in there that it's it becomes unbearable after a while. So, what I could do if I wanted to keep this guy here, I could probably you know just EQ out the high frequencies and maybe make it more of a I don't know kind of a percussion track to some extent. Let's try that with the sample. So it's not incredible, but it, it kind of works. Now, this is this was really the main goal of this tutorial, just how to import samples in our DAW. Logic Pro X, how to chop them up, make them loop perfectly, use flex time to make any tempo change we want. And uh, we could stop there, maybe add some drums on top of it. But I want to go further and show you a few more tricks to personalize the sampling experience because it's one thing to loop, it's a different thing to actually chop up a loop.